I've noticed that many of the masters of the past and today's professional artists have a similar formula when it comes to mixing darks for shadows. Instead of using two black paint, which can solidify shadows and cause them to look flat and opaque, they use what is known as a chromatic black. Chromatic blacks are mixes of dark, mostly complementary and transparent colors. There are many combinations you can use to make chromatic black, like using alizarin crimson and viridian. But the one I've seen most widely used by today's pro artists is a combination of ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide, which has a strong orange undertone. Since these two colors are on the opposite side of the color wheel, they cancel each other out and create a very rich, transparent dark, and it allows you to ship warmer or cooler depending on how much blue or red you use. Using transparent pigments near shadows stands as one of the oldest traditional oil painting techniques. Many old masters avoided using pure black pigment in shadows. For example, it has been revealed that Rembrandt extensively used smalt, a blue glass pigment similar in hue and transparency to modern day ultramarine blue. He combined smalt with brown earths and organic lake pigments to create rich translucent chromatic darks for his shadows. Using x-rays, detectors, and cutting edge computers, Scientists have found small blue pigment in combination with earth browns in various paintings by Rembrandt. This combination is very similar to the chromatic dark professionals artists use today, using ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. With ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide, you'll be able to make beautiful rich warm transparent darks like the old masters. And by adding more blue to your mixture, you can quickly shift the hue to a cooler transparent dark. This formula is a great way to add depth and dimension to your shadows. Pure black pigment is still an indispensable pigment, but it's important to understand how and where to use it. Black pigment is opaque and it's useful to solidify objects. For example, Vermeer used pure black paint, raw umber, and a little white to paint the grayish walls which appear in many of his interiors. Titian also used pure black paint, Venetian red, and yellow ochre and white to paint his skin tones. But as light falls off, colors become more transparent. Therefore, one should try to minimize the use of pure black in shadows and instead use chromatic black. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.